When we did a little bit more research, uh, we looked into DLI. Yeah, so this is the Ecotech Coral Labs tanks here. Um, we were doing a DLI tests here between the two different tanks. Mm -hmm. And we've got a couple other uh, small independent tests uh, taking place down there. Yeah. We're kind of in okay. between two of the tests right now mm -hmm. where we're trimming back some of the overgrowth yeah. and trying to get the colonies down back down to a manageable size because <laughs> some of them had totally overgrown each mm -hmm. other. Uh, a lot of our caps grew to the water surface and grew yeah. totally flat across the top created like independent little ponds and then you know detritus would settle in there and yep. they would basically choke themselves out. Mm -hmm. So you can see on some of the purples where there's a little bit of damage in the center and that's because mm -hmm. while we were running the test we had to let them grow and we wouldn't you know disturb them or move them and so as they filled in they created dead spots and literally choked themselves mm -hmm. out. Uh, we actually had a similar problem on the red dragons where the mm -hmm. red dragons were uh, along the front edges here and they would grow right up to the water surface and, yeah. and on a single colony you'd have a big flat piece oh, like wow. that on top. Huh. And it would shade the pieces behind it out for flow. Yep. And then uh, all of a sudden you'd get some RTN on some of the red dragons. And, and we left them because we were trying to you know, keep running the test without mm -hmm. disturbing them. And right now we're trying to get, get it back under control and get the yep. pieces back down to manageable sizes. <laughs> nice. Because they've, they've grown so large it's uh, a lot of work to get them cut. And once you cut them up they take up huge amounts of space. Oh yes. So uh, that's so the, always the fun part. So the core labs are incredibly successful if you're having to trim and having issues with stuff overgrowing yeah, the space. Yeah, ab absolutely, yeah. right? If the biggest problem is that the pieces grew too large and, and, uh, <laughs> and it's difficult to maintain them at mm -hmm. this point, that's not so bad. Yeah. Right? That's, so not a bad, that's not a bad situation to be in. It's a good problem to have. So what, what were some of your most kind of, from all the core lab studies, like what were like the biggest growers, like the caps are obviously huge. What are some yeah. of the other ones that really shone during that? Uh, the, the caps grew out of control, mm -hmm. um, literally out of control. Uh, the red dragons grew out of control. They were a very, mm -hmm. very fast grower. Uh, so they, the, the specifically the red dragon, the purple dragons yep. are, we find to be a much, much, much slower grower. Mm -hmm. They seem to be much hardier in the sense that when they grew to the surface, they never really formed a big flat piece. They yep. started spreading out more okay. and they didn't choke themselves out. Mm -hmm. Whereas the reds grew so much quicker and then when they hit the surface, they would, they would, uh, they would damage themselves. Yep. Um, the Panape bird's nests mm -hmm. choked themselves out. Yep. So if we had a regular bird's nest, it would grow nice and spaced out. Mm -hmm. But the Panapes grew so dense that if mm -hmm. you flip over one of the colonies, yep. uh, the underside is, these all started as a half inch little frag. <laughs> And you flip yeah. over the colony, they're they're totally blocking all the light from reaching the yeah. center, and we're now getting like sponge growth in there, mm -hmm. and uh, and whatnot. Yeah. This this is the winter effect for radion, so this is a Excellent. special upgrade you can get. Ah, special winter edition. I like <laughs> winter it. Winter edition. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cloud cover effect, but yep. for winter, right? Add a little sparkle. A little sparkle here and there in the tank. <laughs> Excellent. So now we've been chopping up a lot of the plates. Um, for example, like uh, we've been playing with some of the Monty plates. And a lot of the time, if you have a sunset, the way that people will typically cut them is they'll take the whole plate and they cut it up into a bunch of little squares. Mm -hmm. But what we actually find to uh, work a lot cooler is we let the piece encrust on the underside. Mm -hmm. And then we take the plates and we cut along here. Yeah. And we basically cut off a little tombstone. And then you mount the little tombstones onto a plug like this and then when they, uh, they they cover over the cuts and then they start puddling on the plug perfectly get more growth all around yeah that way. you get more yeah. growth all around right because the and then the tile covers back over very quickly yeah. because the tile is growing from both sides mm -hmm. it's growing from the underside up yeah. and the top side down now is that do you think just because lights reflecting off the bottom as well that is starting to wrap around the tiles absolutely yeah and that's why we keep the the bottoms white um, mm -hmm. When we stopped the last test on DLI, we pulled everything out of the tank, we scraped all the coralline off the mm -hmm. bottom because the bottom had become solid purple. Yeah. And, uh, and we did have a bit of a problem with some vermited snails that mm -hmm. were a bit out of control. Yeah. Uh, and so we had to get that back under control and, and we bleached our racks off again so they're nice and white. Yeah. Uh, and now they're, they're starting to get a little bit of pink back on them. So but for a while they were they were completely white and that yeah. allows the coral to get some light underneath and grow all that reflection underneath too yeah yeah yes. and that's why we run the white racks as opposed to the black mm -hmm. i think the black racks look a lot better for the retail side yeah but for uh, a growth side we prefer the white racks yeah a little bit of reflection adds up yeah absolutely okay. scavenge some more light back yeah. in 
So, so one of the other interesting things, I know you guys did a lot of digging into DLI. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the things we found when Ecotech was here that they came by and uh, they found that our PAR readings were way higher than the readings that they found when they were at Worldwide Corals. And they found that our photo period was much shorter. Our photo period was eight hours, their photo period was 12 hours. Uh, and then when we did a little bit more research, uh, we looked into DLI. And with DLI there, basically what we found is that the corals were receiving the exact same amount of energy there, daily light index. Um, but it's just that ours were receiving a higher intensity for a shorter duration, and theirs were receiving a lower intensity for a longer duration. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, well, I mean, if everything's the same and they're reaching the same amount of, the same amount of light is reaching them, then we should be able to set up these two tanks, run a, a higher intensity, short duration, lower intensity, uh, long duration, and the coral should grow the same. Uh, they should be the same structure. Everything should be identical. So originally the test was supposed to run for four months mm -hmm. and we uh, mounted everything to, you know, one inch plugs in here. Everything started as one inch frags mm -hmm. and we put them on a little one inch plug. We took a picture of, you know, we set up a grid. We measured the part everywhere in here in both tanks, make sure all the par was the same, or the, sorry, the DLI was the same, mm -hmm. uh, but the two different pars. And, uh, and then every week we took a picture of every single frag to catalog it and to track it. And so we ran through the full four months and we're like, okay, great, look, they all look the same. Uh, so, you know, the, the thought of DLI holds true. And so what we're seeing is that, you know, it doesn't matter, you could have a long intensity and, uh, and uh, low intensity, long duration, or a higher intensity, uh, shorter duration, and they're exactly the same. And we said, okay, that's it, you know, we're done. And then we started putting together and, and writing everything and compiling our data. And literally we went to film it, and all of a sudden we're standing at the tank, I think I was with Jay, and we're, we're talking about this, how it's exactly the same, and Jay's like, well, why are these ones overgrowing the plates and yeah. those ones aren't? And we were like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, we just hadn't given our test enough scope. And mm -hmm. so in the four months that we'd originally given it, mm -hmm. we didn't see any differences. But then when we extrapolated, it, I think we were around eight or nine months when we mm -hmm. actually went to film it, we started seeing some real and major differences. And so we ended up running that test for, I believe, like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it actually continued further. And what we noticed was that uh, the Montes, for example, the Montes in the lower intensity, long duration would grow out more. Yep. Okay. And the ones in the higher intensity would cup straight up. Mm -hmm. So the ones in the higher intensity at all, like totally hit the water surface and form these big cups and, you know, we're starting to choke each other out. And the ones in the lower intensity were, were still very big, mm -hmm. uh, but they had grown out and flat. Yep. And then, uh, uh, and even with the same DLI, uh, we did find that in the tank that had a higher intensity, short duration, there was significantly, and I mean significantly, less nuisance algae. Mm -hmm. In bubble algae, in, uh, again, because we weren't removing the racks, we weren't mm -hmm. cleaning them, we were not able to put hermits on them, we were not able to put emeralds on them. Uh, we would get some turf algae forming actually in the lower intensity, mm -hmm. long duration, whereas in the uh, higher intensity, short duration, we didn't have that problem. Clean overall. Tanks were totally, perfectly clean. Yeah. And the, the lights are running this exact same, uh, you know, they're the same height, they were mm -hmm. the same settings, just different intensity and duration. Yep. They're both on the same sump. They are both were set up at the time. We've changed some of the pumps on the side mm -hmm. here since then. But they both were set up with the exact same pump, so they had yeah. exactly the same flow. We put the same coral in the same locations in both systems. Yep. And it wasn't like a red cap and a red cap. No, they were red caps cut from the same mother colony so yep. that we could ensure that they were literally Identical. exactly the same. Yeah. Huh, that's really uh, interesting. It's so interesting with the LG too, actually. That one I didn't know. Right, yeah. so if you have, it, it tells you a couple of things. First of all, it tells you if you have an algae problem, yep. uh, perhaps you're running your lighting too long. Mm -hmm. You might be able to increase your intensity and uh, decrease your duration. We were running the yep. AB plus settings and, uh, and we found with those settings, everything grew fantastic, but significantly less algae with eight mm -hmm. hours uh, duration and a higher intensity. Huh, interesting. We did see some drawbacks. Mm -hmm. So on some of the panapes, for example, the panapes when they were uh, in the higher intensity, short duration, when they were directly under the light, mm -hmm. 
they would uh, bleach a little bit because the intensity is too high. Panoply yep. typically likes a lower intensity light, mm -hmm. uh, which is counter to most birds' nests. Yep. Uh, but directly under the light, they would bleach, mm -hmm. right? And far out from the light, it would be a really rich, deep color. Yep. Directly under the light, they kind of grew better almost, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't look very good. Yep. And then further away from the light, they were much darker and the colony stayed oh. smaller. And mm -hmm. under the uh, lower intensity, longer duration, mm -hmm. we didn't see that color variation. So directly under the light, they were uh, uh, you know, a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. but then when you went to the outskirts, those pieces were also a, a, a not quite as rich in color and they had actually grown a little bit more. Yep. So we saw a more uniform color variation across the piece. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to culture a coral yep. and your goal was to make sure that your pieces were uniform across the entire range of pieces, mm -hmm. there is definitely an advantage to running at a lower intensity for a longer mm -hmm. duration. And if you don't know, a lot of people say, they're like, okay, well, you know, I don't know if I can keep Acropora. Um, I don't know if my lights are intense enough. Uh, you know, is this piece high enough? Mm -hmm. Your coral actually will tell you. So red Monty caps are a great piece, I believe, to, to have in every tank. Just watch, they don't grow out of control, which they tend to. Mm -hmm. But you can tell effectively how intense your lighting is by what their growth structure is. Mm -hmm. If you find that your red caps are growing out and they're all staying flat, you have a lower intensity lighting. Mm -hmm. If you find that they're growing and they're all cupping and scrolling towards the top, that's a very high intensity lighting. And you can use that to gauge what other corals you're going to put yep. in the same area. So if you have a super high intensity, your piece is scrolling, you probably don't want to put your panape there. Yep. You should probably put your panape somewhere where the lighting is a little bit less intense. Mm -hmm. And it will hmm. probably do significantly better. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Was there any other corals that had a big noticeable difference in growth patterns between higher and lower? We saw the red dragons being, again, one yep. of the faster growers uh, in the higher intensity, short duration. Mm -hmm. They grew to the surface much, much, much faster. Yep. So they, they kind of touched the surface in the lower intensity, uh, but in the higher intensity, they, they, even before we could got to the year and a half mark, we had colonies that nuked to themselves. Oh, really? So they would, they would have a uh, big flat surface on them like this, where mm -hmm. all the branches had grown like straight up to the water yep. surface. They'd actually, you know, grown up and then they, they were almost like a little T where they had like a little toadstool on top. Huh. Uh, and they grew so dense that yep. they just cut off all their own flow. And I guess they'd catch a little bit of detrius in them and then they would, you know, RTN or get some damage oh, really? on them. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Uh, whereas in the other tank, it was a lot less. Mm -hmm. I think that you would see some differences in growth structure given a large enough scale. Mm -hmm. But we were also trying to do a lot of really easy to keep corals. Mm -hmm. So I think if we got into some of the more difficult to pe keep pieces, we would see more differences on a lot more Acropora. Mm -hmm. But the point was to make sure that all the pieces that we were doing it with were very relatable to the everyday hobbyist that anybody could then take what we had found in the Core Labs tests and then relate it to their tank. Mm -hmm. And because they're the easier pieces, uh, you know, somebody who is more advanced can still use that information and, uh, and, and run their own test, uh, yep. you know, try out their own stuff, see how it grows, but the information is still applicable. Nope, that's so the torts grew too slow. That was yep. one that we didn't, but they just grew too slow. Huh. That was yeah. very cool. And if, yeah, if any of you guys are watching this, you got any really cool findings you know be sure to share them in the comments it's always cool to learn different kind of tips and different ways and strategies yeah, we all got to share information we have exactly. to share information that's what that's this is a hobby we love doing yep. this right mm -hmm. i i'm lucky and blessed enough to get to geek out about yep. this on a daily basis mm -hmm. and uh please share your info and uh yeah let's see how we can grow our hobby that's good awesome thanks so much for your time patrick thanks guys thanks. there we go now i look taller yeah, so at yeah. least with Devin there then yeah, i can I know. I've, I've yep. been kind of <laughs> Yep. Sorry, Patrick. Perfect. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to kneel down? <laughs> you can put that in the outtake. That's I just should. funny. <laughs>